In this video, we'll discuss world building the elements and chemical compounds of the universe, discussing why you shouldn't mess with chemistry and looking at ways that you can do it anyway. Hey everyone, my name is Matthew, at least that's what I'm called with this number of protons, and this video is part of a series where I'll be going through a science adjacent world building process step by step. Last time we looked at world building the rules of the physics of the universe, with some slight variations to how the conservation of energy works. If you missed that video, the link should be here. For today's video, we're going to be continuing our delving into the science of world building universes, looking at the rules of chemistry. We'll look at why the periodic table is your friend for world building, as well as ways that we can bend the rules to create something unique and interesting. So without further ado, welcome to the world building corner. All right, let's do this. Just like in the physics episode, you don't need to be a real life chemist to have a world building appropriate understanding of chemistry. Chemistry concerns the properties, composition, and structure of elements and compounds, as well as the energy that is released or absorbed when they change. An element refers to all atoms that have a certain number of protons in their nucleus, regardless of their other factors. An element may be pure, which refers to an element not bonded with any different elements, or a compound, which refers to a number of elements that have bonded together chemically to form a new substance. An example of both respectively are oxygen and water. Oxygen is a pure element that's unmixed with another, while water is a combination of an oxygen atom bonded with two hydrogen atoms. Elements may also exist as allotropes, which is where an element has multiple pure states, such as carbon able to exist as diamond, graphite, graphene, fullerenes, and nanotubes. Our real life universe is made up of 118 known elements, organized into the periodic table, which is firmly set, based on the atomic weight of each element. That is to say, we couldn't discover a new element that fits within our periodic table. Any new elements would have to be at the end of the table, and if you're wanting your fictional universe to follow the same scientific rules, any new elements would also have to fit at the end of the table. Unless you completely rewrote the periodic table, which isn't advisable if you're wanting to world build anything even closely recognizable to something in the real world. The number of protons an element has determines its position within the periodic table. And by inserting an element between, say, nitrogen and oxygen, numbers 7 and 8 on the periodic table respectively, that would give that new element 8 protons, and would make oxygen have 9, bumping it up to number 9 on the table, and everything above that up 1 as well. This, however, has drastic fundamental consequences for how the universe is composed on a chemical level, changing everything from how elements are formed, their mass, what stars are made of, what planets are made of, which elements will stick around within an atmosphere, and which elements are suitable for life. The short answer is that this is probably not advisable from a scientific point of view. If you want to add a new element and have it make sense scientifically, then have that element be number 119 or onwards. This doesn't mean your chemistry has to be exactly the same as the real world, however. And in fact, the introduction of our fictional processes of synthesis and severance can absolutely affect the chemistry of the universe we're world building. Buckle in, it's time for some science. As mentioned before, how many protons an atom has determines what element it is. You can find this really easily on the periodic table, with hydrogen having one proton, helium having two protons, all the way to Oganesson having 118 protons. 
how many neutrons an element has though can vary. And the different types are referred to as isotopes. An isotope is a member of a family of an element that has the same number of protons, but possesses a different number of neutrons. Let's look at carbon as an example, which has 15 known isotropes, from carbon-8 all the way through to carbon-22. These numbers, 8 through 22, are the combined number of protons and neutrons, and determine the atom's mass. Carbon is number 6 on the periodic table, meaning we know it has 6 protons. So, as long as the element is still carbon, we know it must have 6 protons. However, the number of neutrons can vary, making up the remainder of the number present in the isotope. Isotopes want to become stable if they aren't already, which usually, but not always, means having an equal or close to equal number of protons and neutrons. For carbon, its two stable isotopes are carbon-12 and carbon-13, with 6 and 7 neutrons respectively. If carbon were to gain an additional neutron, it would become carbon-14, which is not stable and therefore radioactive. This radioactivity is called decay. Radioactive decay is the process that an unstable atom goes through to re-stabilize itself, emitting energy through radiation. Thankfully, all the information for isotopes and their respective decay processes can be found simply by googling. And Wikipedia has tables that show every element's list of isotopes, what type of decay they undergo, how long that decay takes, and what they'll turn into afterwards. So, this is great, but what does it mean for our world building? Well, if we consider that the processes of synthesis and severance that we world built in our last episode are both capable of adding or subtracting electrical energy from their environments, and we know that atoms are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons with a positive, neutral, and negative charge respectively, then through electrosynthesis and electroseverance, we can effectively undergo transmutation. Electrons are the least massive of these subatomic particles, and they're the most common subatomic particle to shift and move around. They're negatively charged, and therefore one might think they'd be a good target for electroseverance to take away their energy. However, Taking away an electron's charge presents us with a pretty serious physics problem. There is no known neutral equivalent of an electron, at least to my non-physicist understanding. So we can either have the electroseverance consume the electron itself, which isn't really functionally how it works. It isn't consuming matter, just energy. Or we can invent a new type of fictional subatomic particle that is the neutral equivalent of an electron. Now, I have nowhere near the level of physics understanding to even begin to speculate on what that hypothetical neutral electron would look like. So, I'm gonna leave that avenue. Instead, let's say that electrons can't have their electric charge taken away. It's fundamentally impossible based on the physics of the universe just like in our real-life universe. Protons, however, are positively charged and do have a neutral equivalent, the neutron. Not only that, but there is real-life precedent for protons changing into neutrons, and vice versa, through a process called beta decay. In positive beta decay, a proton within an atomic nucleus turns into a neutron, while in negative beta decay, a neutron within an atomic nucleus turns into a proton. There's more involved behind the scenes in beta decay, but for the purposes of world building what's going on here, that's what's important for us to understand. Specifically, as electrosynthesis adds charge to a neutron, or as electroseverance consumes the charge of a proton, it's reasonable to consider that it would turn one into the other, which, as we determined earlier, would change the element of the atom. This is great for moving upwards and downwards in the periodic table, and whilst most natural occurrences of this happening would just create unstable and highly reactive isotopes, 
It presents the possibility for transmutation in a controlled scientific environment. However, there are a couple of problems we should quickly address here. First is the problem with hydrogen, which is that hydrogen 1, which is stable, has no neutron present in its atomic nucleus, just a single proton. If this hydrogen undergoes electroseverance, we're left with an atom that has a neutron and no proton, which doesn't exist in our real life world. However, there is a hypothetical concept of neutronium that has been looked at by physics communities as something that could possibly exist. So, let's say that in this universe, it does. Neutronium would be its own chemical element, with atomic number zero. It would be compared to its closest legitimate real-world isotope, the free neutron. Neutronium is not stable, making it radioactive, and has a half-life of 10 minutes, after which time it decays into hydrogen 1, through negative beta decay. Neutronium would be exclusively a gas, all the way down to absolute zero, though it could be condensed into a liquid or solid with extreme pressure, though this extreme pressure would only be present in stellar objects like neutron stars. The second problem we'd face is less of a problem and more of a giant question mark relating to the elements above Oganesson, which would have more than 118 protons. Whilst there is precedent for what we can expect these elements to be like, its lack of real-world study allows for the possibility of fictional liberties to be taken if these super-heavy elements are to be explored. So long as an element fits reasonably within its group and block of the periodic table, you could easily create fictional elements like adamantium, ethereum, mithril, or kryptonite. Just try to come up with names a little bit more creative than something like unobtainium. So, to recap, our fictional universe is going to have the same chemistry makeup as our real world, and follow the same periodic table, though we've got some science-adjacent processes in place to allow for plausible transmutation to occur, and even the creation of fictional elements that fit before and after the periodic table. Join me next time where we'll take this blueprint for our universe and launch it into existence with its own equivalent of the Big Bang. You can find all the information for this video and other resources for world building in general over at worldbuildingcorner.com. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to follow the world building journey. And until next time, stay awesome.